So after the crypto market topped a yearly high and Bitcoin surpassed $25,000 per coin, we've seen quite a bit of drama take place that we need to talk about because not all of it's good. We've seen Binance being targeted by the SEC across a number of major deals. Cardano has lost in a key metric that it has dominated for almost a year to other layer one blockchains. And there's a few major announcements that you need to be aware of if you're a crypto investor. So starting off the overall market before we dive into what's going on with Cardano is that we've seen the overall crypto market still above that $1 trillion market cap, which is a great sign because for months we had seen Bitcoin and the overall crypto market down tremendously, not able to get past that $1 trillion overall cryptocurrency market cap, which is a key psychological level. But recently we have seen a lot of movement among the top 10 cryptos, specifically with BUSD, Binance Stablecoin. Binance Stablecoin was recently flipped by Cardano and Polygon as Binance has been targeted by the SEC. The SEC um, was set to sue um, Paxos over Binance's stablecoin. So then what happened was is BUSD and Paxos just severed their relationships entirely, according to recent posts from the Wall Street Journal. This has caused a lot of fear among investors and caused a lot of outflows from BUSD because people are saying if there's you know issues between the SEC and their stablecoin issuer Paxos, well, that's not going to be good long term. So a lot of people have been taking their money out of BUSD, selling it for other stablecoins, and we've seen quite a bit of change of the guards for where people are putting their money in relation to stablecoins. Still, USDT is still the highest in terms of stablecoin market caps than USDC, but BUSD has fallen tremendously. In addition to that, we've also seen that the SEC has recently been saying that they're objecting to Binance's $1 billion Voyager deal where they were going to buy out the remaining assets of crypto lender Voyager for a billion dollars. And recently they said they object to this. They say it's discriminatory, unlawful, and they just recently came out with that. So this coupled with the fact that they were targeting Paxos and then Paxos had to sever relationships entirely with Binance. All of these things have not been great for Binance and really the overall crypto market as we've seen the SEC crack down on some of the largest crypto companies and crypto projects in the entire market. In addition to this, we've seen that not all has been bad. I wanted to quickly interrupt today's video to bring you a word from our brand new channel partner, Scaflick. Scaflick is the first market in the world for buying and selling equity in e-commerce stores through cryptocurrencies. And the cool thing about Scaflick, in my opinion, is that it solves some of the biggest issues for the rapidly growing $9 trillion e-commerce industry, which we don't see many cryptocurrencies trying to um, go at. They're not really targeting the e-commerce sector when it's the ideal candidate for crypto. Some of the problems they try to solve are that it provides funding to e-commerce stores by creating the first market in the world to trade equity in stores. And the second is that it applies a new concept of investment that guarantees the preservation of capital and multiplies growth opportunities. So it has this unique approach. And on top of all this, Scaflick has already partnered with major cryptocurrency exchanges like LBank, BitMart, ProBit, and has plans of partnering with other top tier exchanges very soon. So currently Scaflick's IEO is coming to an end on Probit on February 20th, 2023. So don't miss out on grabbing uh, extra bonuses like their 5% bonus if you go ahead on Probit for getting Scaflix token now. So if you think e-commerce is going to continue to grow and you believe in the utility of blockchain technology and crypto and combining these two things, well, I think Scaflix is definitely worth checking out. So use the link in the description and let me know your thoughts on Scaflix's revolutionary market for buying and selling selling equity in e-commerce stores through crypto. Anyways, let's get back to the program because while we have seen Binance target uh, targeted by the SEC. Actually, there's been quite a good a bit of good news in the crypto market since we bottomed out earlier in the year at $15,000 per coin. And in particular, this has triggered Kathy Wood and ARK Invest to buy another $3.9 million worth of Coinbase shares, C-O-I-N. And they've done this just in the last few days. And over the month of February, they purchased a total of $37 million. So, uh, ARK Invest has been scooping up a lot of Coinbase shares every single month for the last two or three months now. Um, despite what's been going on in the market, we have seen the market bounce back very nicely. We've seen a lot of good news, but even with this little bit of a scare recently with what's going on in Binance and regulators and some people being a bit fearful, there's still a lot of bullish signs with the overall market. And I'm not trying to just be negative. I just want to point out a few key things that could hinder this bull market, this round 
rally that we've been seeing over the last few months because it has stalled out around that $25,000 per coin. But good news is that we are continuing to see institutional investors continue to pour money in. Now I want to talk about a key metric that Cardano has lost because one thing that we have seen is that Cardano has been leading the way for months and months, really almost the last year, in crypto asset development activity, according to GitHub Commits. What we have seen is that over the last few months and really over the last year, Cardano has always come out in that like number one position for um, cryptocurrencies with the most development activity. Now it has fallen back a little bit. Now it is number three. It has lost to Polkadot and Kusama, KSM. It has lost to these two uh, projects and many people are getting a bit worried because they're saying, well, I thought Cardano had consistently seen a lot of activity. There was a lot of positive things going on with it. And now why are we seeing it losing to projects like Kusama? or Polkadot. Why are we seeing this? Well, the reality is, is that still Cardano is ranked number three. It's still seeing quite a bit of development activity take place. And if you dive in and look at the metrics from Santiment, you could see it's not really too far behind. We've seen in terms of development activity, there's been 506 um, commits, GitHub commits versus 558 for Polkadot. So it's very, very close to one another. And then if you start looking down, like the number four and five positions are significantly behind Cardano and Polkadot and Kusama. So I'm not too worried about this. I know some people have been talking about it. I've seen quite a few people message me about it. So even though Cardano has lost that number one position, it's really just month-to-month -month fluctuation, nothing to be too concerned about. Now let's talk about a few things that are good for Cardano because recently Cardano um, company, Emergo, launched Cardano Spot, which is a social network. And I talked about this a few months ago, but Emergo recently launched the beta launch version of Cardano Spot. They launched this at the end of 2022 in closed beta. So not everyone had access to it. But as of February 16th, they officially launched their open beta. So anyone can, you know, test it out and it went live on February 16th. The key thing about Cardano Spot is that it has a number of key features to serve um, everyone in the crypto market. And for those of you who aren't familiar, Cardano Spot is basically just a social network that has been developing over the last year or so. They brand themselves as a home to connect and celebrate the Cardano community. And a couple of key features that stand out on their platform are like their community hub, news feed, project library, events calendar, and market status. You can see all information here but the big news as of recently is that this has officially launched so people can be testing this you could join the open beta if you want and this has been something that i've seen quite a lot of people very excited about quite a lot of people very excited about in the crypto space over the last few months. And last thing is going to be with Polygon co-founder. So Polygon co-founder recently came out and says that he sees no future for Solana, Aptos, Avalanche, Cardano, or any other layer one crypto. And Polygon is a project I am very bullish on. I've owned it for a few years now, and it's been something that I've been very excited about. So the two things we need to look at with this, the first of which is that it makes sense that another major crypto project, one of the top 10 crypto projects, is speaking not so optimistically about other projects. It makes sense that he is extremely bullish on his project, extremely bullish on layer one project Ethereum because that's, you know, what they're b b building off of. But it makes sense why he would be saying, you know, no other layer one crypto is going to succeed. But the other thing he does have a point with, which you have to, you know, look at um, unbiased, is that he does say that there isn't as much development activity across other blockchains. Like, yes, Solana and Aptos and Avalanche don't have as much development activity. I would say he's incorrect and actually wrong about what's been going on with like Cardano or even Polkadot. But he does have a point that there is a lot more development activity taking place on Ethereum versus other blockchains. Uh, Polygon is seeing a lot of activity as well. So he says he sees a future where it's Ethereum and a bunch of layer two cryptos and all the other layer one cryptos die out. I don't completely agree with it, but it's important to always take in all these different viewpoints, all these different opinions. So that's what's been going on with the crypto market. It's not all bad, but we did have to go over a few key things that could hinder this rally we have seen as of recently, because we have seen Bitcoin rally over 50%, many altcoins rally even more than that, and things have been looking really good, but we have seen that bit of a stall take place for the market around these current levels. Levels.